I'm just going to take us on a journey, right? Uh, the first thing that I want you guys to know, uh, most of you already know that, okay, Raymond is a global speaker. Is an Most of you just know my name. A lot of people on this call today just know the name Raymond Opani, or you know about Youth Spark, or you've heard about it. But there's something I think you don't know, and that is my story, right? A lot of you know my name, but you don't know my story. However, my story is a very critical component of everything that you think you know about my name. My story is a, as as you know has you know has formed series. I mean, the series of events that has happened in my life and how I was able to manage them, uh, you know, to come about to kind of the person that you know now, and that's what I'm going to talk about today, right? And then I'm going to delve into it to share with you guys the principles that has really helped me to achieve the kind of result that I've achieved and which I believe that once you put those practices, you're going to have the same result or even more result. Uh, what most of you probably know about me is that, gift, let me know when you pull up that the, the slide because I can't say it from here. So what most of people will probably, uh, what you probably know about me is that, you know, I'm a leadership consultant, uh, you know, I'm a brand uh, strategist. Uh, so the, slide is up now. the slide is up now. All right. I, I'm not able to see it from my end. Am I, am I supposed to see it from here? Yeah, you're supposed to. Guys, can you confirm that you can am see I the slide? If you can... Yeah, but yeah, I, you will. You will. You're supposed to. But I can't see it. I, I, I can't see it myself. Okay, just hold on. Let me fix that. All right. All right. So uh, most of you know that uh, perhaps I, you know, I spent over ten years uh, working across the private sector. I was twenty-two years when I became the SA to the head of service in my state, and then I worked in the, you know, in the public sector. I had worked in the private sector, and I spent quite a very significant amount of time volunteering in the non-governmental sector in the NGO space. I have a bunch of experience from that industry, right? And in 2020, most of you who also follow me must have also seen that, oh, I was listed among the top 25 authors in Nigeria by Africa. But there's something a lot of you don't know about me, right? There is something a lot of you don't know about me. And that's really, really very, very, you know, where it all began, right? I'm going to start from where it all began, and I'll drive you guys to the processes that have led to where we are right now. What you probably don't know about me is that it took... 14 years. It took me 14 years to go to the university. I spent 14 years before I got I got to the university. Um, all right, it took me 14 years before I got to the university, guys. So what again you don't, you don't know about me is that I had zero skills. From the kind of environment where I grew up, I had completely no skills at all, and I got ejected from my house twice. I got ejected from my house. When you say ejected, it means a landlord pursued me for house. Yeah, I got the first house. I could. I spent, you know, my the money I paid the last. I couldn't renew. You know, they were asking me, asking me, asking me until they pursued me come up for the house. I got another house, you know, by Konja Konja, and I also couldn't pay the house rent, and they ejected me, and I got spot. I now spotted with my friends. For an upward of about two years. Now, this is for someone who has actually been up there, having occupied very big position that was bigger than my age, and then I had to now crash to the floor and having to squat with people. Right? What you don't know about me is that I had my very first international experience in 2017, and there was this, there's actually a story behind that, and that's really what um, that's really what. Um, Okay, thank you. That's really what Gifts has been asking me to talk about. Maybe during questions or whatever, I will talk about that. What you also told me is that in between eight to eleven months, I was able to expand the work that I'm doing to about three three countries in eight between eight to eleven months. And by 2019, I was invited by the Rwanda presidency to speak at you know one of the largest program in the continent in the continent, which is the youth. Connect African Summit, where I was invited to speak alongside other world leaders. Now, in 2021, I decided to go back to school to study. Why? Go to study as a compensation for those number of years that I did not go to school. So my going back to school was 
more like a compensation for the years that I didn't go to school. So I didn't go to school to, you know, prove that I can read and I can read and pass exam. I went back to school because I, you know, the slide is not moving down this place right now. The slide to the, go to the next slide and you, you get to see where I am. I am at, I'm, I'm at the slide that is saying what you don't know. That's the, the next two slides after here, the, ne the next second slide after here. So now in 2021, I decided to go back to school, not really because I want to read and pass exams, but essentially because I wanted to build capacity. Next slide. So because I wanted to build capacity, it was like a compensation for the years that I did not go to school. And in 2023, that's this year, I got to share the stage with the president of the Turkish Republic of North Cyprus, where I was invited to speak, you know, to one of the largest student associations in the island of Northern Cyprus. Now, guys, how did this happen for someone who it took 14 years before I got back into the university? 14 years. I mean, 14 years is a long time for you to have done your BSc, you would have done your master's, you would have done your PhD. Uh, guys, follow me before you can go next slide. Just follow me, right? I'll just say next slide, then you can go. Now, uh, so this this place is now we've been able to do a lot of work across the continent, you know, build a community of um, all kinds of leaders who are doing incredible work across the continent, right? Uh, I've consulted for organizing 100 organizations, helped them to build, um, attend peak performance, build influence, you know, generate resources. Uh, you know, what we talk about, I know that there's a place in my slide that is also talking about, you know, how you be able to, you know, make profits while, you know, building this whole global thing, yeah? And I'm going to talk about that because for me, in four years, what we started building in 2017, in 2017, that eventually, um, uh, that I eventually boarded in 2019, it took us 14 years and we were able to like move around a revenue of over two hundred and fifty thousand dollars within the within those years, yeah. So I've been able to consult for a couple of organizations, you know, hundreds of them, have hundreds of individuals. I'm trying to run so that we can catch up with time, guys. Now, this is the very beginning of my story. I don't know how many of you guys know this man that is showing on the screen right now, right? The man that is showing on the screen is the man. I, I mean, if you are in the leadership space, you will know the man called Dr. Miles Moreau. And it was Dr. Miles Moreau that told me physically when I was privileged to serve as his personal aide that he said that every genuine vision will always make provision. Every genuine vision will always make provision. Now we're talking about going global, we're talking about making building global impact and all doing all those works. It's important to also assess yourself to know why do you really want to become global and i'm going to tell you the reason why you must become a global citizen why you must go global with your ideas your businesses whatever it is that you're doing however you need to be able to access what is the major reason why you want to do what you want to do when dr Miles moro told me that every, every genuine vision will always make provision from that very day a habit of you know, questioning everything that I want to do to ensure that there are no ulterior motives. I don't do things because other people are doing it. I do them because I have weighed them on the scale and I've confirmed that this is the only reason. This is the only thing and this is a very strong why. It has to happen, right? Next slide. Now, I'll be talking about taking audacious steps and, you know, reclaiming your place in the global All right, guys, is it getting interesting already? I told you that this is not a story that uh, is addicted. You are going to be here. Yeah. The question the question is um, the question is really who are you, right? For you to be able to take audacious steps, 
for you to get very audacious, for you to have the audacity to do what every other person are scared of doing, it begins with a question. And that question is, who are you and what do you really want? A lot of people have not been able to ask themselves this question of who are you and what do you really want? You don't even know who you are. You can't define yourself and you said you want to go global. You can't define yourself and you said you want to sell to the international market. You can't define who you are. What do you stand for? There is no way. It is not magic. You can't actually become a global, you can't become globally relevant by not knowing who you are, right? And then for you to answer the question of who you are and what do you really want, it all boils down to the, that of identity, right? And your identity essentially comprises of these three things you are seeing in the screen right now. One of them is self-image. Self-image is not something so, so ephemeral like that. It's just about how you see yourself. You know, in the last couple of days, I was talking with a couple of friends, uh, someone, and the way he was always talking down on himself made me to see that his self-image was beginning to dry up, right? You wake up in the morning. How do you see yourself? As you look at the mirror, the person looking back at you in your mirror, who is that person? What do you think about the person? Which leads to the second level of your identity, which is self-esteem. This is essentially about your overall sense of value and confidence in your ability. There are a lot of people who have customized the time, I can't do it. Who have actually built upon the time that I am not good for this. No, 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 I can't do this. I don't have the capacity to do that. The more you keep, you know, seeing yourself as someone who do not have the ability to do big things, that's also the more you are not able to do that. I'm going to speak to that in a bit where I'm talking, I was talking about, you see, don't ever tell the story of your life in such a way that it negates the future that you are desiring for yourself. The third thing you want to talk about, you want to look at, is your core values. You see, you must be able to wake up every day with very, very about what your core values, about what your personal values, about the boundaries that you have set for yourself that you can never cross. There are boundaries that you must be able to set for yourself. If you are willing to play the global game, then you must be able to enter there with core values. You can't play a global game without core values. You can't play a global game just because, you know, people are playing it, you know, people are going global. If you can't even play a global game just because you got a passport, you can't do that. You have to be able to assess your self-image. You must see yourself as someone who is worthy to make contribution to the global economy. You must be able to see yourself as somebody who has the capacity and the ability to influence change. If you are not seeing yourself as having the ability to influence change, then it doesn't matter anymore. You will never be able to achieve global relevance because if you don't see yourself as somebody who can achieve these goals, it's not going to happen. You must develop belief systems that you live by. These are your core values. If you don't have a core value, pick out a pen and start asking your question. What are the things that you cannot compromise about your life? For instance, for someone like me, I cannot compromise with family. I don't joke with family. These are me anywhere. Family is at the very, very, very center of the things that I do. I am very courageous. Courage is another aspect. I work very, very hard. Right, guys? So next slide talks about what I was talking about. Never tell the story of your life in a way that denies or invalidates the future that you desire. A lot of people are always talking about big, big things. But when they want to talk about themselves, they talk about themselves in such a way that you are even shocked. Uh, is it not this person that was saying he wants to achieve this? How come you are not even seeing yourself as someone who can do half of that? So from today, do not tell the story of your life in such a way that it questions the future, the dreams that you are building. For me, I knew that I was cut out to do big things. I knew I was cut out to really, really make contribution at the global level. What happened? I had to find a way. Guys, listen, everybody has a story. Everybody has a story. Now, what you make with your story is completely dependent on you. Everybody has a story. I don't care what your story is. But you have the ability to use your story to curate the kind of change you want to have to see happen in your life. There are a lot of people, maybe their story is, you know, they, 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 their parents died when they were two years old, or they never even got to see their parents, or maybe they lost one of their parents. I mean, or they were sick. I mean, I've seen people right from when they were, when they were children, and they were able to grow and make 
unbelievable global influence. You have a story. But you see that your story, don't ever tell it in such a way that it questions or it invalidates the future that you desire for yourself. Let's go, next slide. Now, because at the end of the day, you see your beliefs and your core values will constantly influence your behavior and your action. I don't care how spiritual you are. I don't care the church you go to. I don't care whatever thing you want to talk about. But you see, whatever thing it is that you believe, combined with your core values, the boundaries that you have set for yourself, they are going to constantly influence your behavior and your action. So no matter what you believe, you must be able to match it with, oh, I believe this, but these are also the boundaries. Despite my belief, I cannot cross this line. They will constantly influence your, influence your behavior and the action that you are taking. Now, let's answer this question. Why do you need to think globally? I mean, we'll talk about, you know, reclaiming your place in the global stage, but, you know, taking audacious steps. Why do you take audacious steps? Do you need to have audacity? Why do you need to, you know, develop the boldness to do what other people are not willing to do? Why do you need to develop the boldness to do what other people are not willing to do? It is this question. Why do you need to think global? It is because... There are so many people whose successes are tied to your global emergence. I would have said that there are a lot of people whose successes are tied to your success, but it is no longer so because there are people beyond the shores of your community, people outside your state, people outside your region, people outside your country, people in other countries of the world who are waiting to benefit from the message that you have. And because of that, their success, their ability, their ability to succeed is completely tied to your own success. And so that has to happen. That means that you have to do everything possible to succeed faster than you ever know about. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. You must, be, you must have this in your mind. When you wake up in the morning, you need to remind yourself that, listen, if you decide to fail now, if you decide to say, you know what, I'm giving up, there are thousands of people whose lives are in danger, whose dreams have been tampered with just because you refuse to succeed, just because you refuse to come out and share your message, just because you refuse to shine your light, there are thousands of human beings whose lives have just been critically endangered because you refuse to succeed. If that is your belief system, how are you going to attack the subject? If that is the case, how are you going? To, are you going to attack? How are you going to succeed? How are you going to focus on the things that you need to do? All right. Next slide. You see, when we talk about the global stage, the global stage is very dynamic and very multifaceted. It is a place where nations and entities they come together for various activities. If you want to talk about this, you think about the global stage. If you want to be global understand that it is a dynamic and multifaceted arena where nations and entities they, they engage in various activities so there are a lot of things that happen around there and they have global implications so it means that decide to go global is that you're going to change the world if you decide that you don't want to go global that your idea is going to die with you in your village there are also implications the implication is that you are going to suffer a lot of people with your solutions that you have refused to bring out to the world, a lot of people are going to suffer. So it's like you have the solution to providing, let's say, the vaccine that should be able to solve a particular problem. But because you have refused to bring it out, you have refused to launch it out, a lot of people are going to suffer by your inability to realize, recognize that you are the solution to their problem. Imagine if you now know that by you, that you are carrying the solution of thousands of individuals around the world. How are you going to deploy that solution? That's what I'm talking about. And so, whether you want to become a, 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 a you know a player in the global game or not, there are global what implication. And you need to do three things. You need to develop a bold, audacious, and daring attitude. You must be bold. There is nothing to be scared of. Do you know? I always tell people that listen. 
whatever it is that you suffer now will never be more than what you have suffered before now. Whatever it is you have suffered now. You know, I've had people talk about, you know, people talk about, um, you know, the kind of family that they are coming from and how they were suffering and, you know, they talk about all the things. And I'm like, listen, for you to be alive till this point, believe me, what happened in your past is the lowest that will ever happen if you understand that you are born to play at the global game, right? Now, I'm going to just run down through this and then we'll get into principles. I'm going to run this to we'll get into principles. The first is that crowded and competitive global landscape, you need to stand out. You can no longer afford to be playing with the crowd. You can no longer afford to be found where every other person is found. You can no longer afford to be playing small. You need to stand out because standing out is the end goal because that it makes you essential. It is very, very essential that you stand out. You can no longer afford to be, you know, to be making the kind of content other people are making. You can no longer afford to be, you know, pushing yourself into trends, you know, gisting, commenting where people like you are not supposed to be, right? When you become bold and audacious, something happens in your life. It differentiates you from the norm. You start attracting attention. You start fostering sustainable, uh, sustained visibility around you, right? You start inspiring other people to think creatively and also pursue ambitious goals. I mean, look at someone like me. Most times I used to imagine, I'm like, okay, imagine if I never got back to school. Imagine if I, because 14 years, guys, listen. You see, most times I even try to really, really think about all the possibilities, all the things that are possible within 14 a young person not going to school. I mean, we can think about them. We can think about them. I mean, it's very easy to get into drugs. It gets it's very easy to get into addiction. It's very easy to get into all kinds of vices. Today, I look back and I'm really grateful to God. I'm like, imagine, it could have been another way. Because you need only one decision to wreck your life. You also need only one decision to set up your life for, for the, you know, to achieve the best of whatever it is that you want to achieve in your life, right? Now, let me teach you guys something that is so powerful about dreams. I want to teach you people how to use dreams to achieve your goal. You know, we talk about dream big, dream big. Guys, I want to teach you people, you know, one of the biggest secrets that helped me to achieve very, very big goals. But again, let's even talk about what are even dreams. Dreams essentially is a key. Your, if you don't have a dream, then I'm not talking to you. If you do not have a dream, I'm not talking to you. If you are not dreaming big, I'm not talking to you. But if you have big dreams that you want to achieve, I want to teach you how you can use them to you know, achieve your goals. First of all is that dreams are really keys to unlocking personal and professional growth, right? I mean, you can really not achieve success. It's nothing like success if there is no dream. You don't just succeed. You don't just wake up one day and say you have succeeded, right? There has to be something that triggers such that when you eventually succeed, you will know that this was actually what I dreamt about. This is the kind of life I wanted to live. This is the kind of car I wanted to drive. This is the kind of house I wanted to live. This is the kind of person I wanted to marry. This is the kind of country, this is, I mean, you need to have a dream for you to succeed. So if you don't have a dream, you want to go reassess yourself and ask yourself a question. But guys, there are essentially four types of dreams. And I'm not talking about your spiritual dream. For those of you that have been waiting for me to talk about your, your church dreams, no. And understanding these four dreams will help you to know, you know, how do you use them to achieve your goal. Next slide, guys. There are some dreams that are high energy dreams. You see, nobody wakes up every day thinking about low, low energy dreams, right? Now, we have the practical dreams, we have the fun dreams, we have the significant dreams, and we have the legacy dreams. And I'm going to just give you an example of some of these dreams, right? And then I'll now zero in the one you should be focusing on. 
Now, your practical dreams is like, okay, I need a job, right? I want to work in a particular company and then you get the job. I'm just going to give one example. So practical dreams example is like getting a job, you know, buying a car. I'll come to fun dreams. Significant dreams can be, you know, setting up a company or, or collecting a chieftaincy title, right? Collecting a chieftaincy title or studying because you want to be a medical doctor and you go to a medical school and become a doctor, you know, when you have title. Significant dreams. We have legacy dreams, of course, leaving a legacy. You want to die and leave hundreds of buildings, whatever, hundreds of, you know, a lot of money for your children and your children's children. But most often than not, a lot of people do not understand that the practical dreams, the significant dreams and legacy dreams are low energy dreams. Fun dreams, one of the best ways to use a fun dream to achieve a big goal is to ask yourself, what will I do if I achieve this? Let me tell you guys how I do that. So, for instance, I love traveling. And so I ask myself a question, okay, I want to go to, let's say, the US or some, something. I don't like, let me not say it. Again. But again, let's say I want to travel. I love traveling. And I'm, I ask myself, okay, what do I need to achieve such that how hard do I work on a particular project or in a particular stuff so much so? that if I achieve that, I will be able to do this. Or I want to go on a vacation to the Maldives or, you know, whatever. And I'm like, what do I need to do? Let me use real estate guys, for instance. So let's say someone is in the real estate company and then there is a, let's say a reward. And the reward is, you know what, if you're able to sell X, Y, Z properties, if you're able to make X, Y, Z number of sales, then we're going to send you to, let's say, to, to to Nairobi or something or to Rwanda. Of course, you guys know I love Rwanda so much. So we're going to send you to Kigali, Rwanda if you're able to make XYZ sales. Now, this person is going to launch out to make an even seed those number of sales. Not even because they are good at it, but because there is fun, there is fun attached to the heart. There is fun to, you know, the task that has been given to them. They know that by the time I do this, I will be able to travel at fun. Now, if you find out what is fun, what your fun dreams are, assuming you are you have the resources right now, what are the things that you that are very exciting that you would want to engage yourself in? Those things are your fun dreams, right? Let's say, oh, you are in a real estate company, and you say, well, if I'm able to sell this, I'll be able to enroll my school abroad able to fly and have a now retreat in a one one or so countries i will be able to buy so so and so and so and so i would, i mean you need to be able to attach your goals with fun dreams that's what i'm saying i know you understand what i'm saying next slide now let me teach you guys about the ultimate rule of success and these are not things that i have not done these are things i have practiced i'm just rushing because we are already far behind time so i don't try to rush all through the slide uh, I'm going to find a way to share this slide with GIFT so that GIFT can share it across to every person who is on this slide, who is on this call this night. But let me share, talk to you guys about the ultimate rule of success. I learned this from one of my coach, and he said that the ultimate rule of success, the ultimate rule is only one. And that is why a lot of people are not succeeding. That is why a lot of people are working so hard and they are not getting results. That's why a lot of people are pushing and doing, you know, speeding so fast in direction. Have you ever seen somebody that is, you know, a very fine, neat car, very, you know, amazing, beautiful, black drover spot? And he is marching, you know, he is throttling so fast in the wrong direction. But then there is one rule, one ultimate rule. And it is found in the next slide. That is what a lot of people are not doing. You have to raise your standard. The, the only rule for you to succeed is that you must raise your standard. The only rule for you to succeed 
is that you must keep raising your standard. A lot of people do not even have standard. Anything goes. Anything you give them goes. They give them a task to do. They carry it out very they do it anyhow. They don't care what you think about it. They are not interested about who sees it. Guys, don't forget what we are talking about. How do you take audacious steps? Beyond that, how do you reclaim your spot at the global stage? How do you find a space? In that place, you can't go without a standard. Many people I see on social media do not have standard. You find them everywhere, bantering on every topic, putting their mouth on, on, on fingers and whatever on everywhere you see them, right? They are talking even what, when they are not even needed, even when they, they are, you know, when they are not, uh, even when they are, their opinions are not even solicited, you see them talking, right? So you must be able to raise your standard. And how do you raise your standard? There is a how. The next slide, it talks about, you must be able to raise your shoes to most. You must change your shoot. You must remove the word shoot in your vocabulary. Remove the word shoot in your vocabulary and start using the word, I must do this. Because for you to achieve a global goal, for you to reclaim your place in the global stage, there are things that you must do. There are not things that you should do. They are not suggestions. They are prerequisites. They are things that you must do. You must be able to do them. Right, so you must raise your standard by changing your shoot to must. And by the time you are changing your shoot to must, what is the next thing that you're going to do? And I'm going to talk about the things that I did, guys. Uh, let me speak to this changing your shoot a bit, you know, uh, because I need to connect it to some of my stories. Some of you will be like, oh, okay, so where are my stories inside? So some of the things that I started doing then was that I stopped hanging out. I used to hang out a lot back in the days. And I knew that for me to curate, to bet this new option, this place I'm going to now, then I must stop doing specific things, right? I had to ask myself, what are the things that I've been doing that are not in line with the new identity I want to curate for myself? I had to ask myself, what are the things that I'm, I was always doing subconsciously or even consciously that in the real sense of it are not contributing to the future that i'm desiring for my what are the associations i'm going to talk, speak to that in a bit who what are the networks that i found myself i've entangled myself with that if i have to be very honest with myself are draining the energy that i always managed to accumulate i had to focus head on and say you know what i don't think i should I knew that I must do away with those associations, you know. And in doing that, you have to be able to define your new standard. You have to define your new standard. What is your new standard? What are the things, pick out a pen, even as we are talking right now, you're listening to me right now. You want to be able to start defining your new standard. What are the things that you must start doing today? What are the things that you must stop doing today? What are the things that you must start adding to your life today? What are the things that you must stop adding to your life today? That is the way to define your new standard. You have to set certain boundaries with the word must. I must stop this. Because until you start using the word must, you are not ready to change your standard. Must is the language of standard redefinition if you want to redefine your standard and live a, a new type of life then the word must must be part of your vocabulary focus on your standard why must you focus on your standard because your energy will always flow where your energy where your where your focus goes i see a lot of people online i mean whenever anything is trending you see them they have already zoned into those places their attention, their focus, everything they have, they are putting into those those places to discuss things that even their opinion is not even solicited from. But what they don't understand is that the more they are putting their atom in areas where you know, their opinions are not solicited, their energy is being drained. Their energy is being dissipated, is being taken away from them. You have to be able to focus on things that are happening for you and not to you. And so 
it doesn't matter. I, I, I mean, I, I learned from my coach who told me that one of the best ways to focus on things happening for you and not to you is to understand that in life, there are things to worry about. Just make sure they are not small things. In life, in your life, in your life, there will always be things to worry about. Just make sure they are not small things, right? And so if you understand that, you will always have things to bother about. So it will give you the opportunity to focus on the things that really, really matters. It doesn't matter what is going so terrible out there. Something happened a while ago and, you know, someone was calling me to ask me if I know about it and if I told anyone. I told the person that I am not too quick to convey bad news. I am not too quick to, to investigate toxic issues. I am not too quick to investigate negative conversations. I, it doesn't matter. I, I mean, people around me know that. My friends know that I've built this thing I call selective deafness. That it is very possible I can be in a room with you and the worst of terrible things are happening, even on social media, and I will not know about it. I will not know about it. I won't ask questions. I will not interrogate because they are very toxic to my mind. So, so I have this thing that repels, selective deafness, I call it, that repels me from even zoning in, from even getting interested to know why certain things are happening they are happening right it is focusing your energy the next thing i want to talk about is your ability to live your future you see guys i told you that when i started i was squatting in my friend's house right and one day in 2017 i decided that was it 2017 yes i think it was 2017 you know i learned something that changed my entire life now, for some of you that are listening to me, it's unfortunate I can't see you guys, but you see, there is one of the ways, maybe some of you guys are squatting with someone, like I was squatting with someone, uh, my friends, many years back. But I learned something that made me to move out. What was that? Is the fact that if you learn how to take care of small things in your life, your mind will be open to think about big things. If you learn how to take care of small things in your life, your mind will be open to think about big things. One of the things I did was to start taking care of all the basic things that are problems in my life. You see, as you are seeing me like this, I prefer to focus on handling big issues than on tiny, 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 tiny issues around me. I am very aggressive with very tiny problems. I am very, very, very aggressive, very brutal with things, particularly if they are small level conversation. In fact, there are conversations that you will never see me being part of. Not because I don't want to be part of it, but because I consider them as the tiniest of issues around me that I don't even give my energy to talk about them. I don't know if you're getting what I'm saying. So, two things. Take this thing. One, there will always be things to worry about. Make sure they are not small things. Suddenly, learn how to take care of small things in your life and your mind will be open to think about big things. What are those small things that you may want to take care of? Number one, you may want to take care of things like feeding. If you are living in your house and you are always used to buying food outside, you want to rethink about it and start getting more domestic. You want to start buying more food items in the house. You want to spend more time to cook in the house. Because by doing it, you unlock a particular part of your brain that will help you to start thinking about the things that really, really matter in your life. You know, that was what I did back in those days. So I started buying things, buying little, little things. I never bought a lot. But by buying a couple of things, I started creating a life of abundance. I started creating a life of abundance around me. What is that? The fact that I could buy beverage, I could buy all the little, little things that you know about that are like food. I could buy rice. I could buy these small, 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 small. I didn't need to buy many. I didn't need to buy, even have money to buy a lot of them. But I could buy a little, a little part of everything such that in that my one room where I was staying, I felt so abundant. I felt like I had everything I needed in the world. Because when it comes to food, food was never a problem because I could practically eat anything I want at that point. It doesn't matter the quantity. So you may want to try that out. If you are someone that used to buying food outside, you want to start asking yourself, um, you want to start asking yourself, you know, I'm going to round up very quickly. I'm going to round up very quickly. So you want to start asking yourself, right, how do I start creating a life of abundance? The next thing I want to talk about is 
Then I was talking about living your future today. Living your future is essentially developing a vision board. What would your life look like when it happens? Find a place, redesign it. One of the things I always recommend that people do is to have a whiteboard. If you are living in your own room, if you are living in your own house, have a whiteboard where you are always ready to sketch your ideas. Where you are always, that was one of the things that I did. You know, for the two years that I was trying to get myself back, the, the highest property I had was my reading table, my reading desk, and a whiteboard. My reading table, I was I was lying down on the uh, with wrapper. I was you know I was spread wrapper on the floor. That's where I was sleeping back in those days. My biggest arsenal, my biggest resources was my reading table, my laptop, my table, and a whiteboard where I would always scribble the ideas and the thoughts that I had in my head. So you want to live your future today. Guys, learn how to live your future. Imagine the kind of life you want to live in the next 10 years. Find a way and bring them closer. It can be as little as organizing your room. You want to be live a life where you are so organized in 10 years time you are so organized everything around you is so fine it might be you repainting your house even if you don't have money to find a, a painter use your own hand buy paint it is very cheap you repaint your house to the kind of color that you would have wanted in the next 10 years you want to reset the section of your bed you know arrangement of your shoes the way you would have wanted it to be in the next 10 years Find the things that you think that will happen for you in the next 10 years and find a way to bring them closer, right? So that is the best way to live a future. And the next thing is get into the right association. I cannot overemphasize this. Get into the right association. Association, the right relationship will pay you more than confidence. The right relationship will pay you in the long run more than competence. Get into the right association and you'll be ready to change your life for good and that was one of the things that i did and one of the things that i did to get into them guys have you ever noticed that it is very difficult to break in very successful people it is very difficult i mean you cannot just tell them hello hi and they allow you that is because of the amount of work it has taken them to get into that place and so they will allow anyone to come down and drag them down from where they are from and so there are two things to do if you want to force yourself, if you want to push yourself, if you want to connect to a high net worth individual, one of them is that you have to be able to show enough hunger to be able to get into their space. They need to see you and they will see your eyeballs practically red to get into their space. In that way, they will be sure that when they allow you into their space, you are not going to abuse that chance. The second thing you want to do is to leave them, go to another place and succeed so 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 well in another industry such that guests can begin to talk as peers these are the two points i'm going to give you on that and then the thing i'm talking about is collaboration guys these are no longer time to compete these are the worst times in in, in history to compete because collaboration is competition collaboration is the new competition because there are a lot of things collaboration gives to you i don't know why you know, maybe personally because these are what you know poverty ment mentality does, and I'm saying this because I'm saying that someone that really, really came from a very, very horrible poor family, and you know where. See, guys, let me even say this. Some of you guys know what I'm saying. You know, there is a sense to which poor people are always reluctant to give what they have because they feel like if they give it, it will finish. You know, if they're able to, if you give a poor person a bottle of drink. He will be drinking this small, small. He will not finish it, right? He will not finish it. He will not even give to anybody because it feels like if he gives to you, to finish. But those are back in the days. Right now, this is the new competition. Find people who are doing the same thing that you are doing with and come around them. Find people who are already succeeding in the area that you want to succeed and come around them. These are the things that you want to do to change your life because when you collaborate with people, you're able to unlock teamwork, you are able to exchange ideas. You have inspiration. They inspire you to stay on track. You are able to share knowledge. You are able to do quite a whole lot of things. Build support system with them, and you are able to achieve unprecedented results for yourself. And before I leave, I'm going to talk about this. This is so powerful, guys. Particularly for those of you who are looking forward to building high net worth relationship. You see, in 2024 relationship is going to play a very big game more than your competence guys go and mark this right somewhere you are going to see people 
who are not as good as you are, but who are doing big, big things because the people are very good, even more than you, are giving them to opportunities that you know you can't connect just because you didn't know. Now, on this screen right now is what we call the power interest grid, or if you like, we'll call it the stakeholders analysis. The stakeholders analysis essentially talks about how the kind of people that you want to have in your life and how you can manage them. In fact, this is the reason your inability to understand this, you know, your lack of understanding of this power interest grid is the reason why you have been abusing a lot of relationships. People, you should be saying A, B, are saying why, whether it is village people that is, you know, preventing you from is connecting with these people and achieving result you know you meet people and tomorrow they are not talking to you you are wondering what what it's not their fault it is your fault because you did not understand their place in the grid such that you can speak to them in the language that they are going to understand now on this grid you're going to see you know on the vertical angle you're going to see the power it goes from low to up is the high right so it means and then on the horizontal level are uh, is the interest so there are people in our lives everybody we know everybody in our lives have these two things in various degrees so there are people that let me like this see there are people that have power and low interest there are people that have low power i'm talking about I, I spoke about getting to the right association and i said build collaboration but then in trying to do this you must be wise you, you should be wise enough to know people the category, the, the place in the grid where they belong, so that you're able to address them appropriately. There are people that have zero power and zero interest. They are not powerful and they are not interested in what you are doing. These people are the least important people. Don't even spend your energy trying to convince them because they are not powerful, they are not interested in you. So you're, not, you're going to waste a lot of energy trying to convince them. On the other side are people that have, I need the next slide. Next slide, you see what I'm saying? Now, on the other side, you're going to see people that have low power and high interest. The people that have zero power, these are your family members, right? These are your family members. They are very, 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 very interested in you. They are interested in your success, but they cannot influence nothing. They cannot do anything about it. You know, they want you to succeed, but from now to tomorrow, they can't do anything. You know, for this set of persons, find out who they are and keep them informed. Do not stay away from them. The CD people that are very interested in you, you only need one trigger to convert them to very powerful people. Because once they become very powerful, it will not, it will be, it will be difficult to get them into because they're already interested in the things that you're doing, right? Then there are people that have high power and low interest. These are the people I'm going to talk to about last. Now, up, you're going to see here. You're going to see people that have high power high interest these ones are the key player these are the people you want to engage closely these are the people you want to service you want to service their relationship you want to manage them closely you know you want to always keep informing them about the things that you are doing the people that have high power and high interest you don't need to put a lot of energy in in convincing them or in telling them the things that you're doing but there is another set of persons that are very powerful, but they are not interested in you. Have you seen those rich men that you're going to see? You're sharing all your ideas, telling them how you want to change the world. You just need them to support you. They are not looking at you. That's because they are very powerful and they have low interest where you are. You see these people? You see these people? They are already powerful. They just need you to do something to activate their interest. They just need you to do something to activate their interest what do you need to do you see everybody has a need everybody has a need the people that have high power and low interest they have needs you need to identify what their needs are and deal with them at the point of their needs provide solution find out what where the where there is a gap in what they are doing and provide solution at that level you will be able to unlock their and you move them to the other side of the spectrum where they are high in people with high power and also they have high interest.